Hi, I'm Sean Charlesworth. And I'm Jeremy Williams. I'm the 3D printing and fabrication specialist for Tested. I like to tinker with code and electronics. Some of my past projects include helping Adam Savage out on his Hellboy Mecha Glove replica, a fully functional Ghostbusters ghost trap, and a custom cutaway lightsaber. I added some electronics to Savage's Star Trek chair, adding some LEDs and sound effects to it. And I also invented the game frame, an LED pixel frame for 8-bit classic arcade art. And I also this year made the pin sim an interface for VR pinball machines. This show is about making things. It's about the journey from the computer screen to something that you can actually hold in your hands. From bits to atoms. Welcome to Bits to Atoms, the very first episode. I'm Sean. And I'm Jeremy. Uh, we are going to be working on some really cool 3D printing and electronics collaborations mm -hmm. together. Although this is not the first time. No, it's not. We worked on the Ghost Trap together, which was a ton of fun. I did a lot of the electronics. I made uh, the code work so they would push your smoke out and make your sounds blare. And I figured out mechanics and the structural part of it and all the 3D printing aspects. Yes. Uh, but what was most enjoyable about this was the collaborative process. And we got to exchange ideas and you know, bounce things off one another, see what would work, and we would sort of challenge one another that way. Yeah. Loved it. So hopefully that's what this series is going to be about. We're going to share a lot of the files so that maybe if you have a 3D printer or you have mm -hmm. an Arduino, you can download the source files and make them yourself. It's wherever possible, right? Correct. So for the first project, Sean, yes. I have an idea. Hit me. May I? Do you remember one of these? Oh. I own this exact one. This is a toy I never owned, and I always coveted it. I wanted one, and I still want one. I am a huge fan of the 80s. I love video games. This is a natural fit for me. I am just drawn to it. It is an old Coleco arcade game uh, that runs, this one happens to run Donkey Kong. I think yeah, they, they have a whole line of them. Maybe the four of these that you yeah. could buy, and they all ran a different game, and they have that cheesy LCD display <laughs> on it. Uh, and it's just, it's wonderful. But what I would love to do is convert this into a tiny little MAME cabinet. Oh, that now, would be awesome. Now, I'm not the first person to think of that. There, there, our friend of the show, Steve Lynn, tweeted a, a guy named Neil Henry who does that. He takes these off of eBay and he squeezes a Raspberry Pi in there and he makes it play that game. But what I would love to do is actually 3D, 3D print, print this, right? That I, totally makes sense. This, it seems like it lends itself to 3D printing. Um, I don't know how easy it would be to do this, but I think it would be a perfect little MAME cabinet. The challenge would be to do it so that other people can print this as easy as possible. Sure, and what are you, I, this is lends itself to 3D printing. Uh, it looks like maybe three main parts. Uh -huh. uh, it doesn't have to be exactly the same on the inside as long as they fit together. Um, but uh, yeah, and it's, it's only together with a few screws here, so I think that that I think that would be doable. Well, yeah, obviously the people who are going to be assembling these won't have those screws. It would be cool if we could assemble this with as few, little hardware as possible. <laughs> I love 3D prints that don't require anything else. Like you okay, just download the files that, and you're like, everything's there. I love that. That's a further challenge, but I, I accept your challenge. I believe but, you're up to this challenge. But what, so, okay, so once I get that, what are the guts? Because one of the things I, well, I need to know is like what's going to go in it so I can ac accommodate Of course, that. of course. Well, obviously, we have the small emulator's best friend, the Raspberry Pi. Okay. And there's no reason not to use the Raspberry Pi 3. Because uh, that's going to give us Wi-Fi. We're going to be able to beam our files into there. No way. Connect to it and you know do whatever we need to without any tethers connecting us to the network. That's awesome. Um, as far as displays go, um, I'm thinking this display, this is an Adafruit 800 by 40 display. It's much it's, bigger than the display But it that, still fits there. perfectly in that space. I mean, that's just a, making the frame a little wider. I, so. I hope that's not a challenge for you because we, yeah. do, we do need to use this resolution for I think we can go with that. techie reasons. Yeah. Um, so this is the little driver for that. But right. the, the magic sauce to this, it, uh, it, have you ever built a main cabinet before? Never. I've not done okay. that at all. The, it's, the, it's a lot of fun until you get to the wiring process. And anybody who's done this understands what I'm saying. Like Every button on the front is connected to the processor or a board. Oh, and every right. single button also has a daisy chain of ground cables going between it. And it's just <laughs> tedium. It's horrible. It's a horrible <laughs> experience. No one remembers that part because it, it's not the fun part. So if we could avoid that That'd by be... maybe using a gamepad, Oh, which nice. would replace the front panel and connect to the Raspberry Pi using a single USB cable. Much easier. I think this not only gives us a ton of pre-made wonderful controls that work well, yep. but it also simplifies the 
the process of building yeah, and that, tremendously. There's plenty of, even if we go through the exact dimensions of this case, it totally works. I think this is doable. Yeah? Yeah. All right, that is good news. I am super, super psyched about this, and I, I, it would be a lot of fun to share this with everybody else. Uh, and I'd love to have my cabinet back. I don't have any. Great. So, what's the first step? How do you want to divvy this up? Well, obviously, you're going to be doing all the electronics. I so can, I can what I need that. from you is I will need a set of the hardware that you want to use. Mm -hmm. And then that way I will be able to figure out how it's going to install on the inside. And that also might dictate how it's going to assemble. Okay. So, and then your, your screwless challenge is going to, you know, make it a little more challenging. But uh, yeah, if you give me all that, we should be good to go. All right. We'll probably find some speakers. We probably make mm -hmm. a battery pack for it so that it can be wireless. Of, of course, yes. Um, and yeah, hopefully there's enough room in there to fit everything. Um, but I'll get you a list of parts, and then I will go to work on the code to get the emulator running on the Raspberry Pi. Great. Maybe we can get together in a week or so sure. and check in. Yeah. See I how think everything that'd be a goes. Good idea. <laughs> All right. Knock on wood. This is going to be fun. Okay. Let's get going. Okay, so we need to create this in the 3D modeling program. And we need reference to do that, to make it easier. Sometimes you can find blueprints online and that makes your life a lot easier, but we have to do this the old fashioned way since this is a vintage cabinet. Um, so we're gonna take some reference photos that we'll bring in as image planes in the 3D program. To do that, I've set up just a blank background so there's not a lot of clutter and it stands out. And you probably don't want to use your phone for this because you want to use the more telephoto end of the lens. If you use a wide angle lens, uh, you're going to get distortion on the object, which is then going to skew your modeling results. So we're going to set this up. We're going to take uh, front, side, bottom, top pictures, which we're going to bring into the program and then model over top of. All right, so the cool thing about doing Raspberry Pi based emulation is that a lot of the work has already been done for you. Retro Pi is the answer to all of your prayers. It's a Linux distribution that you drop on a Raspberry Pi and you're off to the races. It just requires a little bit of configuration based on whatever your hardware is gonna be. So this is the screen that I wanna use because it's more or less the same dimensions as what's in the old arcade cabinet. Um, this is uh, sold by Adafruit. It's an 800 by 480 screen. So we just have to configure RetroPie in order to appreciate that. So we're just gonna drop the micro SD card into the computer so once you flash the SD card with RetroPie, there's a file in the root called config.sys, and that is where we make a few changes. Adafruit, who sells this display, has kindly set up a web page that gives us all of the information that we need to know in order to make the Raspberry Pi talk to this screen. So we just have to add a few of these lines in here, tell it what kind of HDMI display it is, give it the timings, and at the very bottom, we want to rotate the display. So we add one more line at the bottom to rotate the display. Because we're doing a vertical display, not a horizontal one, and with any luck, once we drop this card into a Raspberry Pi, it should work. Let's go check it out. So Jeremy has given me all the electronic components that he intends to put in the case. And one of the first things I will do for this type of project is I will build 3D stand-ins of all of this stuff because we need it in relation to what we're building to make sure that it all fits in there. So there's a few different ways you can tackle this. Sometimes you get lucky and something very popular like the Raspberry Pi will have an existing model. You just search around a little bit online and you can download it, bring it into the program and you're good to go. Other things such as the speakers, battery packs, you might have to recreate uh, from scratch in the program. And that can just be simple primitive models, squares, circles, etc., that represent the dimensions of that object. Now in that case, sometimes you also get lucky and find blueprints for those online. Adafruit tends to post uh, technical layouts of all their boards so they can get the exact measurements off them and plug them right into the program. Otherwise, you can go with the old-fashioned calipers and take some measurements yourself or with a ruler and get it as close as possible. All right, Sean, I've been tinkering away at the electronics, but I am more excited about what you've been working on. What, can you show me what you got? I've got some stuff. I got, I got a, a test hood printed out. It's a little heftier than I think we need, but it turned out pretty good. This so is awesome. It, I mean, it matches. Look at that. Yeah. 
Now there's some modifications we had to do because you have to keep 3D printing in mind. So we have to, for example, flatten the back completely, remove these little ridges so that ah. it, can, it can lay flat and print. Right. So this can print without supports. Um, and you could even print it upside down if you needed to. Uh, but one thing I learned is I had I had actually modeled in some pins for this to go together. I don't see them. Which you don't want to do because they tend to break <laughs> off. So I, I have another solution for that, which we'll we'll see in the next revision. Okay. But I got that. But the biggest thing, which I'm most proud of, is I got that. I got the front panel. Ah. So, and it fits nice. in perfect. And then I basically I put a little brace back there that holds in all the electronics, and you're. Okay, go. you did exactly what we talked about. Yeah. However, I think I might have miscommunicated something to you. I was thinking, and maybe this is perfect. Okay. But I was thinking it would be cool if the front panel of this actually replaces the front panel of the of the controller, so that the all the guts oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, like rest yeah, up against the plastic. Where you're going. So, so in other words, the much harder way. <laughs> I guess that is what I had in mind. Yes. Okay. okay. So you know, I think I could do that. Put it uh, on the back burner. If there's time for it, that would be amazing. Uh, well, this is okay. Yes, I literally did exactly what you told me to do. Um, this is a this this is a it illustrates the importance of clear communication when uh, collaborating, uh, especially when you're not necessarily right. in the same workspace. And that's that's on both of us. I I think that's a mutually misunderstood uh, part you know, of the process. Where. I just Episode, I don't know. It just made sense to me. It's like oh pop. Episode one, we're still learning, right? <laughs> this is yeah. going to be a process. Oh, this will never happen again. <laughs> I'm Ever. sure. I'm sure uh, it will never happen. And again. never happen on the ghost. And never the other way around. Yeah, absolutely not. Absolutely. So <laughs> okay, so I think we can do that. That's it's, it is a little more involved, but uh, I think it's doable. That so, would be cool. All right, so we'll 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 revisit that later. What are these pieces here? <laughs> Ah, uh, so this, um, so I wanted to talk about uh, prototyping. You know, 3D printing is also known as rapid prototyping. And uh, one of those things that I think people forget to do sometimes is, is what I've done here. So I, I, I've also been working on the slotting everything together, no screws or anything. Oh, good, good, good. Which has been challenging. But to test that out, you don't want to like print out this entire cabinet, which is probably going to take like 40 hours, and then discover that nothing fits. So. What I will often do is I will print out parts of a piece. So this is basically the bottom uh, tray here, and I basically just chopped off the front part, and I chopped off the front corner of the front panel so I could check these dovetails that I made. Uh, that's super smart. So, so this is a little dovetail assembly. You just put it on and you slide it down and it locks in place. Is that how this works? That's my plan. So far it's working okay. No, but and I mean, is that how the original works? No, it's all screws. Totally it's different. All screws. This is literally just set on there and, in, uh, and held in place with screws. Awesome, dude. So my thinking is that it'll it'll dovetail. And so this is my, my test piece, which took far less time to print and used up less uh, uh, material and then you can do iterations a lot faster. And then I did the same thing with uh, this represents the trim on the hood and I needed dovetails on the back of that as well and then this is the back of the tray and that allows us to test fit that to see if it's going to work okay. Brilliant! So that's, I, I can't recommend doing that enough. Uh, it really saves on time and material. Because how long would this take to print? Oh, uh, this itself? took like 12 hours to print. Oh, so. see, that's a, that's, a, that's a commitment. <laughs> this took like uh, 10 minutes. So it's, Excellent. it's uh, definitely a way to tackle the 3D printing. And, and what printer are you using for these guys? Uh, I'm using the Ultimaker right now. I actually have a two and a three at home and the, the three will do the dual materials. Uh, but the tools, the two has been my standby, and I and I love it. So it's, oh, very it cool. does a really nice job on these. Well, I've got a little bit of the code working so far. Yeah, it's, it's not playing games yet, but I'd love to show you how that works. So here's basically everything you already had. This yeah. is the display. This is a Raspberry Pi HDMI cable. The only thing here is a big power brick. We'll replace that with a battery. <laughs> I I don't have room for that. Yeah. All right. Okay, good, good. 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 So now when you plug it in, something actually happens. Ah, but before I do that, when yes. you do the honors, this oh, goes yeah. into the game into pad. Into the wrong game pad, right? If I plug it in, with any luck, ah, raspberries. It's upside down, but mm, we get the idea. It's the right idea, yeah, it's, right? It's it's right set up for us. So this is great. So this just boots right into the to the retro pie, and you nice. then control it with the gamepad. Okay, nice. So it's kind of working. 
So, and what is this running exactly? Like, uh, is it is it like Linux or what? Yeah, well, it's Linux. It's a Linux distro uh -huh. that's made for emulation, you know, emulated gaming. Um, so you can see all the <laughs> Linux garbage at the beginning. Nice. Um, but it, it's completely user friendly. Uh -huh. The whole system is made to be controlled with the controller, which is ideal, right? Because we don't want to have a keyboard that you have to plug into this thing. So I can literally just scroll up and down and enter and everything with this. Yeah, absolutely. That's You'll be able to awesome. choose your emulator, install new emulators, uh -huh. all kinds of things just using our one little uh, controller. Now, you didn't mention having to have a port to get to the Pi. So how do uh, we... Well, that's the great thing about Raspberry Pi 3, is it has Wi-Fi built into it, so we can just <laughs> nice. connect All over right. Wi-Fi, we'll SSH or whatever we gotta do, FTP the things on there that we need, and it's completely wireless. So as long as they have the charge port that we talked about, we're good. Yes, no, we do need the, the USB charge port, but that should be it. Everything else is hopefully completely internal. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, this is really cool. All right, cool. So I'm going to go. Oh, wait, I have a few more parts for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here's the battery All right. pack, and here is the audio amp All right. along with some cool little speakers. Hopefully, oh. you, you can find a spot for those. I recognize these are from the Ghost Trap. The yeah. Same ones. Those are work great. All right. So that'll be cool because that'll be stereo. I'm pretty sure this didn't have stereo. I think so. that has a plastic speaker in Upgrade. it. <laughs> Upgrade. Upgrade. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good. Here, yeah. here's a little charge cable, or um, that's the adapter that oh, for the converts the boost, USB power right? to okay. the charge the battery. And that should be everything that you need. These are, these are relatively good size. I think working them in should be no problem. Sweet. So, yeah. All right, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to try to get some more software on here. All right. You let me know how that goes. We'll, Fingers up crossed. we'll, we'll update the joypad. Yeah, every, everything else is going great, so I'm I think we're good. I'm really sorry. I'm really <laughs> that's, sorry about that. I think that's on both of us. That's, I am not, no. That's All weird. right. Good luck, Sean. <laughs> Thanks. So with building all of these parts that are going to be 3D printed, there's a lot of different ways you can tackle it. There's a lot of different programs that can use uh, a lot which are free. Uh, I particularly use a polygon modeler which is typically used for games, animation, movies, etc. Uh, CAD is a really good option for mechanical and assemblies and would be a good option for this, but I'm doing what I know. So with building a lot of this stuff, there's gonna be a lot of trial and error. You're gonna have, to, a lot of times I will block things out with just very simple shapes to figure out roughly how I think it's going to go. And then I start refining it and refining it. You're going to go through many different versions. Sometimes it's easier to rebuild something from scratch rather than tweaking it over and over and over again. Um, and then there's a lot of test prints involved as well. So uh, I will be constantly printing to check things or how they're gonna come out. Sometimes I will modify things in order to print better for orientation or to print without uh, supports. Another really important thing to do with this type of project is to stay organized. You should be naming all of the parts in the 3D space because if you just have something called cube and there's 30 million of them, you're not gonna know what part is what. So constantly naming things and keeping them organized is really important. A lot of times I'll keep a separate document that has notes for different versions of the files and what is in them and the changes that I've made to each one of those. So let's talk about failures in test printing. Um, to get to this final hood for the machine, I went through all of these. Uh, these are all failures for various reasons. Uh, so expect to do some revisions in test printing. Um, that's, it's called rapid prototyping for a reason. So in this case, uh, this very first one was just the walls were too thick, I had pegs that broke off, and um, it just needed redone. So while that was a successful print, it wasn't successful uh, in the long run. These were failures due to actual uh, hardware problems. So it turns out one of my spools of filament, the plastic filament that feeds into the printer, was jammed and wasn't feeding, and so these kept failing, and it took me this many times to figure out the problem. Uh, so that'll happen. Uh, and then you have a uh, human error such as this guy where this needed to uh, print with support material and I simply forgot to turn it on in the program and it became a big spaghetti mess. So, you know, be ready for that. <laughs> All right, we have everything finished. We just have to assemble everything. Yeah. Sean, would you like to do the honors? Yes. May I present the pie score as you perfect name you can have. I think this is phenomenal. 
Dude, seriously. It, it, I was very happy with how it turned out. This is amazing. I mean, the detail in here, the accuracy, it's, it, you did it. You pulled it off. Yeah, and it slots together as requested. Oh, please, show me. So how, how quickly can you disassemble this thing? Uh, so it's got dovetails on the uh, hood, pops off. You, the screen goes in with little pins that it slots into. And then once again, dovetails on the bottom panel that just comes right off. It's done. Yeah, and you will notice. Yes! It only took yeah. eight versions. <laughs> oh but my gosh. It works. Let's see the other side. This is the this was the problem. Oh. Because you have to recreate all the framework that all the buttons and everything goes into yeah. and all the standoffs for the screws. Now I lucked out that the manufacturer of this mm -hmm. pad had this faux blueprint of vector drawing on their website which I was able to do the front pad with. And so it, it lined up? It lined up perfect. Wow. So I imported that into the 3D program and drew over top of that. Yeah. The back, not so much. That was a lot of caliper work and, and like I said, eight different, it was, it was literally just like nudging things by fractions of a millimeter. Yeah. And then I was getting a little punchy and I made some dumb mistakes myself. So, but in the end, we, we have it. Nice work, dude. Yeah. Um, once, whenever I have to, um, you know, do any kind of modeling, and, and I do very little, but whenever I do, I, I scan things with a flatbed scanner. I don't know if that would have done the that trick for is, this or not. I never would have thought of that, because I'm taking, we, you know, we discussed taking reference pictures for this, and I was doing that with like a telephoto. Right. It's, but it's really hard to get dead on, and there's some parallax no matter what you do. I never thought about doing a flat bed. It works with objects I that think are flat. It would work this for that. is not flat, so no, I don't even know. But it, but it's relatively, it's flat. -ish. It's a possibility. I don't know. I'll keep that in mind for next time. Awesome yeah. job. So the the emulator is ready to go. Um, we just have a bit of an assembly process ahead of us. Yeah. No, dude, I think we might be ready to put power on. Do it! I don't know. Let's see here. I want to play games. Yeah, let's hook the screen up. Um, we're going to need to get power to that. that Do we need another USB? We have USB cables here. Oh my gosh. This is... <laughs> you think it's... You really think this is gonna work? All right, I'm gonna turn no it. No blue smoke. We'll see. I'm gonna. I think that's off. All right. Sounds good to me. And then I'm gonna plug it in. Oh, I say I've done my job. This is all on you now. All right. Here we go. If there's sparks, it's gonna spark now. Ooh, oh my gosh! Pie. Oh my gosh! Hi, uh, raspberries. I heard something come through the speakers there. This is amazing. That was good. So far, so good. That's audio. Yeah. That was a good sound because yeah. it means something's happening with the audio. Okay. okay. This is amazing. I thought it was off, but it was on. You know, I guess this is in the surprise. On yeah, that's interesting. Just get it nestled in here, and I think we're good to go. All right, what do you say we uh, put it together and throw some games on there? Yes. All right, I would love let's that. Once we get those connectors, we'll get the hood on, and then that will lock everything together. And we got our, our pie score. All right, I'm going to take this home, and I'm going to Finish off the software, get the cables connected, All right. and then I'll be back here to show you how, Play some games. how it looks. All right. All right, Sean, today is the day. I took the Pi Score home, I got the right angle adapters for the HDMI cables, okay. got all the cables that we needed. I tweaked the software quite a bit, and it's working 100%, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to show it to you. Bring it out. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. I'm ready. 
This is a gorgeous machine that you have designed. I love it. It's great. Uh, now, I did run into a couple problems that you already know about a couple of them. Um, these start and select buttons were a little bit sticky. Yeah. Right? So that was just a matter of it being the first layer. So I think you widen those a bit. Yeah. Same with the power button, right? Yep. We just, uh, with the first layer, it prints like this, yeah. and you get a little bit of a lip on there. So the tolerances can really wildly vary. A lot of times, I'll just trim it out with an X-Acto a little bit. Mm -hmm. But we went ahead and made it a little wider. So I think this one will I think that's will fantastic. I wanted to compliment your little um, mounts here, too. What, are they, what do you call oh, these? The, dove, the, dovetail? The dovetails, yes. I took yeah. this apart countless times. <laughs> and every time, it was just, it fits perfectly. To reiterate, there are no tools used in assembling this. It's made by four pieces of plastic that all fit together. The only place that you use screws is to mount the circuit board for the control panel. Yeah, and that was that was the challenge that you gave me. It's like a puzzle. And, it's and wonderful. I, I dreaded it a little bit. I but love it. I'm really proud of how it turned out. And I should we should note that the screws that you're using for the gamepad are from the gamepad. So you'll so have them. So you have them. Which right. is a wonderful thing. A lot of times you get a model from Thingiverse or someplace online, and you also need a very specific <laughs> screw. Well, you'll have these, right? Yeah. I love that. And I wanted to also compliment your little screw holes that you make here. Obviously, you can't print threaded holes, right? but I inserted re and removed these screws many times, okay. and these held up. A lot of times, models that you print, these will break if you force a screw in there. What's mm -hmm. your uh, strategy for designing those holes? That's, you know, that is tricky, because these are pretty small, and as you said, the problem you run into a lot of times is they snap off. Yeah. So there's a few things you can do. Uh, one thing I do is I, if I know the screw size, or sometimes I'll measure them with calipers, I actually have a chart that will tell you, it's a tapping chart, and it'll tell you the size hole that you need if this is to be a threaded hole, and I'll start with that oh. uh, so I have an exact measurement of what it should be. Now, because it's 3D printing and the tolerances are a little off, I might add like 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters to that measurement. It's a, a little bit of experimentation. The other thing I did is something that is just done in regular manufacturing where you might flare the base of it out so that it has a wider base and then goes up to the size uh, pillar to screw into. Okay. Because that wider base will be less likely to snap off. Oh, you're talking about the whole structure itself. Yeah. And oh, yeah. So that's one trick. And then another one on this particular one, you'll see some little bridges that connect some of the pieces. And that was actually in the original gamepad mold. And oh, I yeah. just replicated that because that strengthens them and gives them a little extra support as well. It's super cool. I mean, it really works well. Yeah. Um, one last thing that we tried to do, we tried to replicate, here, we'll bring out the original too. Yes. The original Coleco Arcade has a joystick on it, which it's an arcade game. It's supposed to have a joystick, right? Yeah. So we, you modeled this perfectly, but the problem is when you try to put this down onto the D-pad mechanism, it just ends up sliding around mm -hmm. because you're pushing the joystick in different directions rather than pushing down on the D-pad. Oh, the leverage is different. Yeah, I think that's the problem. I think in this one, there's an actual screw that mounts it down into some sort of ball that moves in different directions. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a different mechanism. So as much as I tried, I even tried putting in some D-pads in here to make, oh, it, nice. to make it stick. <laughs> it just doesn't work. I think the D-pad is the way to go. Yeah. We'll provide this model. It, people it looks, try it, out. it looks beautiful. Yeah, we'll we'll still supply the the joystick, and I think part of the problem is leverage. And due to the nature of the 3D printing with the layers, I think those layers grip the the yeah, joystick right. grips, and it just like it's too much gripship. Yeah, it, it, I couldn't find a way to get it to work. Maybe someone else can. Yeah, I can't wait to turn this on and show this to you. I'm so proud of the way this thing turned out. Uh, would you like to do the honors? May I? Please. Yes. All right. So just uh, we have our. On off yes. switch, you're gonna fire that up. So that on off switch actually just controls power to the whole unit. Um, when you're shutting it down, you wanna go through like the menus to, it's, like, it's a Linux machine, you still have ah, to be so gentle you have to with shut it. it down. Yeah, you do a shutdown process and okay. then you turn it off. Okay. Uh, so when you turn it on, it goes through the whole boot up sequence and then you'll come up and there's actually two versions of MAME on here. And in case you're not familiar with MAME, it's the multiple arcade machine emulator. Mm -hmm. So it emulates arcade games. So is this like, like arcade games like you would find in the arcade or is this like the Nintendo NES emulator? No, it does that too. Okay. But it really does emulate the actual arcade ROMs that were in the arcade. So of course you need to uh, find these ROMs legally, you should own the games, that kind of thing, yada yada. We are not providing any ROMs to you. However, with every main uh, box, that is always a part of the process. You have sure. to get these ROMs and then put them on there. Um, so there's two versions of MAME. The one that comes standard with the uh, Retro Pi is called Lib Retro, okay. and it runs almost every um, classic game. I see forty-four games. So this is, the, the, and these are all the vertical ones. Oh, you know? so it's perfect. And that's what I love about this. Like I have built many Mame cabinets before. This is the first one that's ever had a vertical screen, and it's just 
awesome to see these games played in their you know, default aspect ratio, where it's filling up the whole thing, rather than like a tiny little rectangle in the center. Yeah. I love it. So go ahead, pick, okay. it, pick any game. So, and I can just use the joysticks and the D-pad. Yep, uh, awesome. and the A button is select. Keep in mind, we have stereo sound, so games that you pick that wow. actually employ that, um, like Tron or Gyrus or That's Spy Hunter, uh, they actually are in stereo and they just sound great. Okay. So it's, it's uh, launching the, the game I chose. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's pretty quick. Um, now, one other thing I wanted to note was I, we ran into some power issues, and it took me about a, a day to figure out like, what, what the problem is. I wasn't getting any sound out of the left channel. Huh. And it turns out we were drawing too much current uh, for this uh, power chip. And so what I ended up doing was uh, lowering the power, uh, the, um, I'm sorry, the, the output on the um, amplifier chip. So oh. that so that we we're not getting quite as much as it's capable of. Okay. But we're getting stereo sound. So we're we're pushing the hardware to the limit. On we this we thing. really are. Like the, this is supposed to put out about one amp of current at five volts, and we're pushing about an amp and a half. So <laughs> uh, it's just like it was. It wasn't quite enough for the amplifier to actually turn right. on turn on that left channel. Do you foresee any uh, tweaks in the future to like address that, or is it it is what it is? I mean, it is what it is. I think if you do what I did, it probably will work. Uh -huh. And if it doesn't, you're, you got mono sound, and you're, most people aren't even going to care. Right. And the nice thing is, it, the the interior here is pretty wide open. I mean, absolutely. The, it's it's made to fit this particular screen, yep. but you could put a lot of different things in it. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. All right. So Try let's uh, fire this up. So your select button is adding coins. Your start button is launching the game. This sounds amazing. Doesn't this sound good? <laughs> I mean, I'm, no, no strikes against the classic one, but I'm. I believe the, the original has bet. a plastic speaker in it. I'm willing to bet this has superior sound. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, and it really plays well, doesn't it? It the, does. The buttons are in the right spot. You've got all the controls you probably ever need. For games that require two joysticks, yeah. this gamepad functions as that way because you get the D-pad on one side and the right analog nice. stick is your right joystick. Nice. So if you play in Tron, you're rotating your turn or that kind of thing, you can actually get it all done with this. Amazing. Yeah. This it's, is, this looks great, it sounds great. And I messed around a lot with where to place the buttons on the, the thing and it feels, it mm -hmm. feels good. It, I think you nailed I, it. I think it's good. It's right in the right spot. This is great. Um, so we can't stop this episode without thanking Steve Lin who lent us this perfect condition, yes, uh, original tear it apart. Donkey Kong. Yeah, so we, um, you were able to model off this and yep. it, it turned out great. Um, I am so happy with this project. I can't thank you enough for doing all the modeling on this. I think uh, it turned out great. Thanks for bringing me a great project. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we have lots of other ideas for other projects in the future. We would love to hear yours though. So if you want to come over to tested.com where you will also find all of the files to make your own yeah. uh, pie we'll, score. We'll have the 3D files and a hardware list. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, and we'll be there in the comments too if you need any suggestions or help along the way. But if you have any suggestions for other projects, let us know. We're open to anything. Absolutely. This uh, series is brand new and sky's the limit. We'd love to hear from you guys. Yeah. Um, nice. so until then, I can't wait to share this with people. So let's go find some people who are willing to play a little retro gaming. What do you say? I, I don't think that would be hard to do. Yeah, not in San Francisco. Yeah.